I feel really, I, I'm deep in my feels about book banning, as you can tell. What is book banning? So book banning, in a very basic way, is censorship. It's when schools or libraries or local politicians decide this book is no longer allowed to be read by this community, and it is pulled. Book banning is the systematic removal of books from whether it be school libraries or public libraries based on policies. So sometimes they come from a school level, sometimes they come from a state level. It's really folks with power that well, maybe shouldn't have that power, deciding what books should and should not be banned based on their personal opinion. Book banning is creating a restriction in what a person can't read based upon topics, words that are used in the book. It feels like a way to keep children and teens in a space of ignorance rather than allowing them to become accepting of other people. Book banning is anything that takes access to books away from young people. And that includes strictly banning a title and not allowing it in a school, but it also includes something what we call soft censorship, which means a librarian or a teacher might not have a book in a classroom or a school because they're afraid of the controversy that would come up. I'm still trying to figure out what book banning is because there's book banning, there's book challenges, there's censorship, you know, parents bringing it up at the school board meeting without ever reading it. So there is a plethora of ways that people can challenge books. What I do know is that I, I'm a parent of teens and when young people want something, they will find a way to get to it. That's what's most baffling about book banning right now, because we're in the information age. Young people have the world in the palm of their hands. At a time when they could access just about anything, you are banning books? It doesn't make sense at all. It's infuriating, and authors are bearing the cost, uh, but really, really young people are bearing the cost that don't have access to these books, that show them that they are not alone, that they have other people like them in the world, that their stories are shared by a community. And when you remove all these books, you are telling those kids that they are isolated and that they are inherently wrong. I feel really, I, I'm deep in my feels about book banning, as you can tell. First and foremost, young readers readers who really need to see themselves in the pages of books, readers who need some guidance in how they should be and what the world is like outside of their neighborhoods and their city and their state. Book banning at its core, the greatest effect it has is on young people uh, who don't have access to books that show them that they belong to a community and that their stories are shared by this, by this group. So many marginalized communities, black and brown people, queer people, Jewish people in a lot of ways. That's a community that I represent, is queer and Jewish people, so that's, those are the kind of books that I like to use my voice really loudly to uplift. Any kind of marginalized community are the ones that are deeply affected by this. Children of color, people who are queer, people with disabilities, anybody who is really not able-bodied, cis, heterosexual, white, people who don't fall into those ranges are affected by book banning. It's really affecting and impacting readers of color, most importantly, because never in my experience of writing, which is practically my whole adult life, have there been so many options for young readers of color. And now that there are so many options, it just baffles me that book challenges and book bannings are happening across the country. By virtue of being me, I am a black woman. I'm an immigrant. I grew up in a big urban city. I gravitate towards books that most people don't think I should be reading. By default, those are banned books. Most of the banned books are about topics and are about people that reflect my worldview and that reflect how I look and how I move through the world. I feel like it's so important to learn about communities that, are, that you don't belong to, to learn more about the communities you do belong to, to diversify your reading in every sense of the word, to give yourself as wide a worldview as you possibly can. It just makes you a more compassionate person overall. I read a lot of LGBTQ fiction and, and those books are often on those banned book lists. I often pick up books that now are on banned book lists and I read them and I think to myself, wow, 
I really wish I had this when I was growing up. The difference that it would have made in my own experience, my own coming out experience, to have access to these books while I was trying to figure out who I was. One of many reasons that books are being banned is in order to reduce the empathy shown towards other groups and maintain the status quo. The topics that the books cover can be complex. They can be uncomfortable for a lot of people. They don't want to push themselves out of their comfort zone. They don't want to see their kids pushed out of their comfort zone. In the, you know, the last couple years, there have been more and more books available by diverse authors that are being celebrated, that are winning awards, that are getting in the hands of so many, and that scares people. It scares people because it's identities and experiences that they don't understand. I think other people who are pushing this agenda really think they're doing good. They're protecting the innocence of children by, by not having them deal with what they consider dark themes. And so I think this is a mentality that's wrong. People are trying to exert control over others. And I think the easiest way to start exerting that control is having you know, an impact on what people can read. And that's where it starts. What is the risk to young readers? I mean, the risk for, for young readers of book removals and book bannings is telling them how narrowly we consider who gets to be protagonists in our world. I think if we always have white, cisgender, straight, male protagonists, which is ultimately the only books that aren't being challenged right now, that we are telling anyone else that you belong on the outside, that you are secondary characters, you are accessories, but your story is not worthy of directly considering. And that is really, really hurtful. The risk in banning books is more on the book banners in that what you're trying to protect the young people from, they're going to seek out on their own anyway. And it, your efforts are going to be moot in a few years. There's so much work going into trying to protect young people but the walls that you're putting up around them, they're going to tear them down. That's what young people do. In high school, I was in English honors and reading all those classical literatures. I had not read a book by any black author in any of my English classes in high school. And Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye was the first book that I had to read by a black woman author. And I struggled with that book because it was the first time I had to make text to self connections. It was the first time that I saw myself in a book and I wasn't taught to see myself in a meaningful way and to write about it and to talk about it because I was reading Shakespeare and I could not connect to Shakespeare in a way that I connected to Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye. A band book that always comes to mind for me is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. It was a really fantastic experience being able to read about an experience similar to my own, right, of, of you know coming out. You know, for me, that is a book that is always filed under books I wish I had when I was younger. I love All Boys Aren't Blue, which I know was one of the top most banned books last year. I think it's so important to learn about this person's experience and become more compassionate about all the things that this person went through in their life. I just think it's a really beautiful story. The Hate You Give really like stuck with me because I saw so much of myself in Star. I understood the struggles that Star went through to balance these two worlds, that whole code switching, and I just felt so immersed in the story and understood a lot of the struggle in which uh, Star went through. Actually, The Wizard of Oz, which was banned in 1928 by the Chicago Public Library because it was ungodly for portraying women and young and girls in leadership roles. I didn't realize when I was reading The Wizard of Oz that it was banned, and I think right now we don't talk about it, and it seems ridiculous to even think about The Wizard of Oz being banned. But actually, I'm really interested by that example because I think it shows how ludicrous all of this is. This is not about the books themselves. This is about people within a culture trying to change that culture by changing what, what young people read. I think the more aware we are of book banning in general and what books are being banned, the more we can advocate for those books. It's important to talk about banned books because every reader deserves to see themselves in the stories.
I think it's really important to remember the most vocal voices in this moment about book banning are the angry voices, and those speak really loudly. So if you just listen to the room, it sounds like everyone wants to remove books, but this is actually a tiny percentage of people. We all have to remember that the vast majority of people in our country like do not want to see this happening, and we need to fight to have this diversity of literature that we've worked so hard to, to build up. We have to fight to have that remain in young people's hands. Read banned books. Read banned books. Read banned books. Read banned books. Read banned books, folks. <laughs>